Howdy folks, Jabberiki here. Happy Easter everyone. Now I'm quite sure that a lot of you want some recommendations for Easter special cartoons to watch today. Well, grab your chocolate eggs and peeps, we're gonna dive into seven of them. Let's go! Bob's Burgers, Eggs for Days. Every Easter, the Belcher family hold an egg hunt in their home. But Bob and Linda turn it into a competition between them both, going as far as increasing the amount of eggs to extreme numbers. Because of this, Louise, Tina and Jean end up egg hunting all day and night, which takes the fun out of the game. This year, Linda and Bob end up getting drunk on jelly bean schnapps. The next day, they're too hungover to remember where they put all the eggs. Luckily, the kids find all the eggs, but they later realise that the family missed one which has left an awful stench in the house. The Belchers have to find the egg to end this horrible smell. Bob's Burgers holiday specials are renowned for being brilliant, and their Easter-themed episode is no exception. Even though the story is set indoors, the episode has a strong springtime atmosphere, all because of the Easter traditions being followed. The egg hunt itself, while not fun for the kids, is quite entertaining to watch, due to the parents' competitive streak and how we have no idea where any of the eggs could be. Found one. It's Dad's. Oh, Tina, what if you just put it back? Dad, that's cheating. I'll give you $500. I heard that! Plus, there's something joyful about seeing Bob and Linda drinking candy-flavored alcohol together, despite the consequences. <laughs> At the same time, there are huge stakes to the rotting egg that go beyond the family's egg hunt. You see, the smell of the rotting egg dramatically affects the Belchers. From the odor driving customers away during a beef boom... Are you guys serving lunch yet? I know it's a little early, but uh, <laughs> I gave up beef for Lent, and I'm really excited to eat it. Is there a horrible smell in here? No. Oh, God. There is up in our house. Want to come smell it? Five bucks. Uh, no, thank you. To their landlord threatening to burn the house down unless the stench is removed. We hid the Easter eggs, and we can't find one of them, and it really smells up there. Oh, dear. Well, I hope we don't have to burn the whole building down because of the smell. <gasps> Well, that doesn't really happen. Oh, yes, it does, Bob. Once certain smells set into a place, you simply can't get them out. The rotting egg goes from being a smelly inconvenience to a genuine threat to the family's home and business, making the hunt for it more than just a contest between Bob and Linda. I won't spoil how things are resolved, but let's just say that this experience brings the family closer. Rugrats, Bow Wow Wedding Vows. The babies are enjoying playing in the springtime garden while the grown-ups are planning for an Easter brunch. Tommy thinks that Spike is too in love with Fifi to care about his best baby friend anymore. In order to rush the stages of romance to spark Spike's memory of Tommy back, the babies hold a wedding for Spike and Fifi. While this episode doesn't really have a lesson to teach kids per se, children will relate to Tommy's feelings. Because kids can feel neglected when someone they love is spending more time with a romantic partner, Children will resonate with the sadness that Tommy is facing and sympathize with his fears of losing his dog. My bestest doggy friend has forgot it all about me. There's also something very cute about the babies hosting a wedding for their pets. Yes, Spike and Fifi are oblivious to everything, and Angelica is a bossy wedding manager, but the baby's innocent interpretation of a marriage ceremony is honestly adorable. Uh -oh. Hello, Fifi and Spike! I'm your speecher, Tommy! Dearly blub blubbered! <clears throat> we are here today to see a marrying of Fifi and Spike. Parents that end up watching this cartoon with their kids might get something out of it too, because the adult characters have their own plot to follow. You see, Dee Dee is feeling ignored by Stu, as he's more focused on his inventions, and she insists that he spring cleans the gadgets that failed. Grown-ups will find some appeal to the married couple's strained love life, empathizing with Dee Dee's feeling of neglect and booing at Stu for not being a better husband. <sighs> the Easter brunch itself has something for the whole family. Children will enjoy seeing the babies hunting eggs, while parents will find some charm to the grown-ups trying to successfully host a springtime get-together, only to embrace its failure. I especially love seeing the party planner learning to be a guest at his own party. That's both really funny and quite cute at the same time. And now, I'd like to introduce a very special guest. Hi, everyone. My name's Ralph, and I'm a party planner. Hi, Hi Ralph. Ralph! Don't worry, we do get a happy ending for Tommy and Spike, but I don't want to give away the cartoon's sweet conclusion. You'll understand when you check it out for yourselves. South Park, fantastic Easter special. When Randy Marsh and his Catholic family are decorating eggs together, his son, Stan, asks what eggs and the Easter rabbit have to do with their Christian religion, but Randy refuses to explain. 
Stan learns that his dad is part of a rabbit-worshipping cult dedicated to preserving the belief that St. Peter was a bunny and their pet Snowball is his descendant, making him the rightful Pope. The Catholic Church kidnapped the cult members and demanded the men hand over Snowball, who is safely with Stan and Kyle. Stan has no idea what to do, so he prays for help and Jesus comes to their aid. This is a South Park episode that aired during the show's conspiracy twist phase, and I have to say that it's one of the best episodes from that era. It's a genuinely exciting story that parodies the Da Vinci Code while creating its own unique lore. A secret religious history that's really, really silly, yet super fun to learn about. Proof is everywhere. Look at the Pope's hat. It makes no sense, except that it was originally designed for a rabbit. It's also funny seeing Stan, who just wanted to make sense of his religion, suddenly being in the middle of this fight between the Pope and his dad's cult. Oh, thank God! Hand it over, Stan! They're gonna kill me! Give him the rabbit! Yes, hand it over. First, you have to promise you won't hurt it, and that you'll let everybody go. We promise. We swear it on the cross. Just hand over the bunny, Stan! The episode is also a sharp satire on religious authorities who lose the meaning of their beliefs to retain their power as a corrupt church member goes as far as threatening to kill Jesus and stealing the Pope's position. There are real Christian figures who decide to neglect Christ's teachings, or because they end up prioritizing their personal entitlement and prejudices over the heart of what Jesus taught. So it's great seeing a South Park cartoon calling out such hypocritical behavior. St. Peter was a rabbit, and a rabbit should be Pope. Kill him! What? He goes against the church, he must die! All right, that does it, Bill. I'm pretty sure that killing Jesus is not very Christian. All in all, this is a hilarious and entertaining Easter special that escalates a simple question into a religious conspiracy thriller faster than a rabbit can hop over a hill. Oh, and can I just say that Snowball is the cutest bunny ever? <laughs> right, so we're halfway through this video. Did you know that 73% of you who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed to my channel? So feel free to click that subscribe button to keep up with my video releases. And to those of you already subscribed, don't forget to click that notification bell. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The turtles and the hair. This Easter, Krang has invented a contraption called the Docilizer, a ray that turns people into timid rabbits. And the evil alien has plans to use this machine on the whole of Earth. In order to stop the Docilizer, the turtles must retrieve a powerful crystal from the fairy tale dimension. Yes, this cartoon is as silly as it sounds, but that's what makes it so fun. It's aware how ridiculous its premise is and has its tongue firmly planted in its cheek. I mean, as soon as we see Bebop and Rocksteady dressed up as Easter bunnies, we know exactly what we're in for. The world of fairy tales may be the last place you'd expect the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to visit, but there's something funny about them interacting with these particular kinds of characters. From Jack of Beanstalk fame to the hare from the tortoise and the hare. No wonder I could never beat you in a race. There's two of you. Who are you? The name's Hokum Hare, and we don't take kindly to cheating tortoises in these here parts. The latter even mistakes these turtles as his racing rivals, to the point where he becomes determined to follow them all the way to Earth just to avoid losing a race only he thinks is happening. The thing is though, as ludicrous as this cartoon gets, it still manages to raise high stakes, reminding audiences that Krang is trying to turn humankind into a vulnerable, frightened mess, which in itself is quite intimidating when you really think about it. This is April O'Neil. Oh, I don't want to do this. With an on-the-scene report on the strange ray, I'd rather be hiding under my desk. Oh, that has turned many of us into, oh my goodness, timid, <laughs> the Turtles and the Hare is a bizarre but fun Easter special with a goofy sense of humour, far out ideas, and a grand scale villain scheme. I highly recommend it if you want a good laugh with everyone's favourite turtles. Bugs Bunny, Easter Yags. In this Looney Tunes cartoon, Bugs Bunny agrees to take over the Easter Bunny's delivery route, only to deal with a spoilt mean little boy and a trigger-happy Elmer Fudd who wants to make Easter Rabbit stew this year. This is very much your typical Bugs Bunny cartoon, but with a springtime flavouring. That's not a bad thing though, because there's a reason why this rabbit is a timeless icon. The Formula Freeze cartoons is the perfect template for comedy hijinks. The way he trolls Elmer Fudd this time is all expertly pulled off through the top tier animation and Mel Blanc's excellent voice acting. Whether he's tricking the hunter into enjoying a tunnel of love, or distracting him with a quick pace magic show. Now observe closely, the hand is quicker than the eye, now nothing in the hat, nothing up my sleeves, I'll need a watch and a handkerchief. 
Now, I place the watch in the handkerchief and proceed to seemingly destroy the watch. Step back, son, I might hit your fingers. However, Bugs also becomes the victim of other characters' mean spirit this time, too. From a bratty kid giving him a hard time. Now, look at here, you juvenile delinquent. Ooh, he broke my widow arm! He broke my widow arm! Ooh, the bad rabbit broke my widow arm! <laughs> to realizing that the Easter Bunny is just using him. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? He went that way, and don't forget your Easter eggs. <laughs> Even though a part of us feels sorry for the Easter Bunny, we can't help but also resent him for pawning his suffering job onto someone else, knowing full well how horrible it is to commit to. Every year I get some dumb bunny to do my work for me. <laughs> this is a well-executed Looney Tunes Easter cartoon, a Bugs Bunny short that demonstrates his show's formula at its best, all while making this springtime holiday into a fun farce. The Smurfs, springtime special. The Smurfs are all getting ready for Easter, eager to celebrate the springtime holiday, but Gargamel has found a new way to capture these creatures. The evil wizard uses black roses to knock out Mother Nature itself, so that the land will freeze over and the Smurfs will come to investigate, only for Gargamel to snatch them up. I was quite surprised how this special actually feels, well, special. Gargamel's Smurf catching scheme is quite devious, especially when it severely affects the balance of nature. Our Smurf heroes aren't just needing to stop Gargamel to rescue their own kind, but to also restore spring back to normal, because an extended winter won't just interfere with Easter traditions, it'll also screw up the natural order of everything. However, it's the introduction of a new villain that really shakes things up. Gargamel's own godfather, Balthazar, a far more imposing and threatening dark wizard. Someone who even frightens Gargamel himself into being a coward. Hear me, Smurfs, and hear me well! I am Balthazar, Master Wizard! Surrender six of your own to me, or you will all pay dearly! That's right, you'll pay dearly! Oh, no. <laughs> I will. He's not just a far more competent villain than his godson, he also brings a gun into the mix. A freaking gun in the Smurfs. This guy does not mess around. Although the special isn't all just danger and frills. You see, one of the Smurfs Easter eggs has hatched into a baby duckling, marking the beginning of spring when new life is born in the wild. <laughs> Kids will really resonate with Ducky's need to join the Smurfs in their fight, because children relate to feeling left out of grown-up things they're too young for. The Smurf Springtime special is more than just a cute little Easter story. It's also an excellent Smurfs episode that raises the stakes for what we expect in this show. A claymation Easter. Wilshire is a down-on-their-luck pig, but when he learns that the Easter Bunny turned down a $5 million advertisement job, he comes up with a cunning plan. Wilshire kidnaps the Easter Bunny, then trains to become a rabbit, so that he can win a competition to become the new Easter Bunny. Now, you're most likely immediately comparing this special to The Nightmare Before Christmas, but the stealing of a holiday is the only connection. Will Vinton's claymation Easter opts for a very cartoony sense of humour, sort of like Looney Tunes or The Muppets, which is a pretty tough genre of comedy for stop motion to pull off, but Vinton really nails it with his trademark claymation. How do you shell, you little dweeb? Hey, leave me alone! I'm incubating! It's quite interesting to see a story in which the main character is a villain, yet with no intention of making them change their heart. Our protagonist is as shameless and rotten as they come. But the fun of the short is seeing the journey of him becoming the Easter Bunny. Remember, relax, reach out with your feelings, be at one with the pavement, and flow across. Just flow across. Go ahead. What are you, Shirley McLean? This is nuts! We're not meant to root for him, but a lot of the entertainment comes from the lengths he goes to get his way and how karma punishes him. We want him to be stopped, of course, mainly because the real Easter Bunny is a darling treasure. A wholesome gentleman with a humble generosity and good morals. Oh, Easter isn't about money. It's about springtime, families, picnics, Easter egg hunts. Um, 
plastic grass. I think that says it all. How can you not want Wilshire to lose when his victim is this adorable? I highly suggest giving this Emmy winning Easter special a chance, because Will Vinton's work deserves more recognition nowadays, and this is a great example of his brilliant talent. So those were seven Easter special cartoons. I hope that at least one of them was to your liking. What's your favourite Easter special cartoon? Let me know in the comment section below, and don't forget to click that like button. Cheerio folks.